So in the previous video, I talked about a practical approach to working with social anxiety outside of the moment. In this video, I'm going to talk about specifically the challenges of being with social anxiety in the moment. And by the end of this video, you'll have a much richer understanding of how you can ground yourself and have much deeper self-compassion for yourself to work practically with it in the moment. So I want to start with a little bit of a theoretical basis to get the ball rolling here. There's a very common conception of people who have social anxiety, right? So this comes from direct experience, things that I've been feeling into, have felt into uh, very deeply previously. But as we're growing up, we develop an array of coping strategies that become almost embedded deeply into our nervous system. And this is something that people who haven't encountered this sort of trauma don't fully understand, I don't think, and especially people in the spiritual spheres um, who haven't engaged or haven't had much trouble with uh, the social component of waking up. So, it, it, it can be very challenging when we hear teachings such as um, just accept what's arising or just rest as awareness and uh, or just have perfect equanimity, right? But what we're doing is we're contending with trauma, um, chronic trauma, um, trauma with a small T where we get small, um, small bouts of demeaning comments and these sorts of things that um, belittle us over time, like a comment from a well-meaning parent such as, oh, you're, you know, you're so silly, like Sam, Sam's so silly or something like that. This is an example. And then that builds up and then we form an identity around in this example being the silly person. Or it could be trauma with a capital T where we were abused uh, narcissistically over a long period of time or a uh, very deep shaming event occurred at high school, for instance, where we, you know, I don't know, um, made an absolute fool or idiot of ourselves, apparently like from our perception in front of the whole classroom, right? And then we get the, the memo, our nervous system gets the memo that it's unsafe to express ourselves. Right. And then also on top of that with social anxiety in particular, there are certain emotions that we experience that are just too ugly, apparently. They're, they're way too ugly so that when we're in a social setting, if we start experiencing them, which is very likely, right, as we um, develop more spiritually, um, that these things start to bubble up again. We're then met with these intense um, energies that we have a mountain of resistance to, that we've built up through our lives through trauma, that basically internalizes the shame back onto ourselves and will have things arise such as if we pay very close attention to if we engage in the similar process in the previous video that I put up about somatic inquiry, we might notice that these energies that as we experience them in the moment have very nasty things to say and there's a lot of internalized shame such as, oh, it's my fault I'm feeling this. Why am I always like this? I hate this, right? Um, so, internalizing blame and shame on ourselves. And for us to then see that and to bring uh, a very compassionate understanding for why it is the way it is can really help to transmute these things, right? Because so often with social anxiety, we think that it's, it's just us. And a lot of people who have social anxiety and especially people who are spiritual, right? We're opening up our sensitivity and we, we're inherently sensitive. Uh, humans are inherently sensitive, right? So, as we open up that sensitivity, we're also opening up our capacity to feel and not just our own stuff, but everyone else's stuff around us. So that when we're encountering these energies, we, we're encountering really strong primal um, vortexing and contracting energies, right? So, then when we go to employ um, teaching such as just rest as awareness, um, it's very challenging because it's like we, we're expanding out our awareness, but then we don't have the capacity yet to be with these sensations as they arise. So, they just- there's just such a- like a vortexing feeling to pull you back into them. So, that if you're having a conversation with someone, thoughts like, what are they thinking of me? Oh no, here's that sensation again, um, can be very overwhelming. It's not just even like thoughts, like uh, often you'll hear teachings and pointings such as um, just notice the thoughts arise and pass, right? And uh, that's that's what's causing your anxiety. It's, it's almost like a deep nervous system 
uh, trauma response that's happening, which is felt as somatic or emotional contraction in the body. And then we get, then we're also hit with a rapid flurry of resistance on top of that compounded on top of it, right? So, yeah, so the, the title of this video is how, how do we work with that, right? How do we then work with that in the moment in a meaningful way so as to slowly but surely pull ourselves out of that uh, vortex of reactivity? So, that's the foundation of this video. And I want to sort of add a spiritual perspective into this as well as I sort of have been. But for those of you who are interested in things like awakening or spiritual maturation, uh, we can really we can really leverage this as a beautiful piece on self understanding and uh, to better understand ourselves, right? Like know thyself. So my encouragement to you would be if you if you haven't already made a practice of this, one of the best things that you can do, which I talked about in a video, I'll put a card up here, is to get into the habit of resting your attention into the bodily sensations. Now, as you do this, it might be very jarring and uncomfortable at first because when you're in a social encounter, if you're speaking with someone very directly and you have your attention and you're being very triggered and your attention is in the emotional experience, again, there's going to be a lot of resistance patterns. So, it might look like this. You're speaking with someone and you hear the advice to rest your attention into the bodily sensations. And then your attention is sort of, it's going into it. It's, and then it blows out. It's like, it goes into it, then it blows out. It's like too uncomfortable, right? So you go into it and then it's too much, it's too much. And then you're like, okay, I can be with it for a bit. And then it's like, oh God, back into reactivity, back into coping strategies. So if that's happening, I would suggest that you be with a sensation very directly. Be with it fully to the best that you can. But importantly, uh, there's so much, so many angles I can come at this with, but importantly, you're just resting in it with and try to bring that that attention of compassionate curiosity. Like, what is this? Wow, can I feel what are the qualities of this sensation that make it so unbearable? What is the flavor of this sensation that makes me feel like there's something wrong with me? At what point does it get too uncomfortable for me to be with? And then as we bring that curiosity into those sensations, so if that if there's one practice I would recommend, that's why I would recommend uh, attuning your attention into bodily sensations. Because basically as we're being with that super uncomfortable sensation, we're discovering that we do have the capacity for it, which then starts to give us leverage. The more that we do that, so, this isn't just something you'll like say, say you try this once and then you, you try this like you watch this video, you try it once and you take it out into daily life. You put your attention in the sensations and then that's it, right? This is something that you would have to be continuous at over a long period of time, right? So, it's not just like a one and done thing. Okay, I watched a spiritual video. Now, I'm going to go back out into the next social situation and then um, yeah, that I'm, I'm going to be good, right? It, you may very well be and you may have a significant shift by by doing so and stay open to that, right? We're not trying to box ourselves into this socially anxious trauma survivor identity or anything like that. But the more that you put your attention into the sensations, the more that you realize and like get curious with the mechanism of like, wow, look how I was with it, be able to, I was with it for like five seconds and then I was speaking with someone then I just went into a coping strategy and I couldn't handle it, right? So, the more that you can do that and then just keep building that capacity to allow yourself to be with what is, that will start to then give you leverage where you can start to do things like more meaningful inquiry and be able to understand if you have safety in your experience, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, to then get leverage on it to see what am I resisting about this emotion? Because often there's like a somatic contraction and then we have a lot of resistance that's on top of that. So, it might say something like, oh, they can see that I'm anxious and that's bad. Or, man, I look, man, I look really uncomfortable right now. I bet they can see that. Or, man, I'm making too much eye contact, right? So, there's like the, some, there's the emotion and then there's a layer of resistance, a mental layer of resistance on top of that. But as you build capacity to be able to feel the emotions very directly, you can then start to get a little bit more leverage over time, more and more, to the sense of um, what, what's actually going on there. 
And that might take a degree, so watching the previous video that I did on this, that might take a degree of immersing yourself with um, uh, small amounts of exposure into social situations. And if you can't do that, you just have to make do with what, what your situation is. Um, and then to once you're once you've left the social situation, you can then maybe bring up that event again in a safe place and then inquire into the beliefs like, oh, OK, I was feeling an uncomfortable sensation and OK, then I'm going to feel into that sensation very directly. What are the beliefs about this sensation? Oh, I believe that if I experience that and they see that, then they won't like me or they'll see me as the anxious person. And you can take that deeper. Why is that bad? Oh, because then I'll be an outcast. I'll be cast out of the situation, right? So, but also what I want to mention as well is often when we're very triggered, um, if all of this seems intangible to you, so the thought and the prospect of being with sensation and allowing it to show to a degree, right? Um, if all of that is just so uncomfortable for you and it's too unbearable, we also need to be developing this capacity to, as I mentioned in another previous video, um, we need to be able to titrate ourselves. So, we need to do this in small doses ideally, but also create safety in our experience. Right. So, what do I mean by safety? Well, we know that the literature, um, there's literature emerging uh, from what I've heard from people like Tara Brock, that if we're really dysregulated, so if we're in a social situation, our mind is dissociating, we're going into the, we're going into a foggy, ungrounded place and it's hard to see what's up, what's down. It's like a pane of glasses in front of our experience. And it's very difficult to um, look at people in the eyes. And we have like a thousand yard stare is what it feels like. Um, and on top of that, we also might have like a sense of being numbed out to experience or we're just ungrounded um, in the moment. So, again, I just want to put in it like we hear advice, like just rest as awareness, right? And when that's happening and there's so much internal resistance, it's very tricky to do that. So, the next best thing that we can do is to support ourselves by creating a little bit more safety in our experience. So, that, that will look like resourcing yourself. So, if you need to take a break from the social encounter, don't be afraid to do that. Excuse yourself to the bathroom if you need to and just sort of like, like give yourself permission like five minutes or three minutes or whatever to just soften into your body, to just take a couple deep breaths. I know a client of mine has a great thing that he does. He puts his hand on his gut. That's a really good way. And you just connect to that warm tenderness that's arising in your experience. Maybe just breathing into that and softening into your body. Maybe you can do some physical touch. A uh, gentleman that I really recommend uh, who has the channel Awake Here and Now, Simon, if you're watching this, Simon, I love you, man. He recommends you put your hand under your armpit, one hand on the armpit, one hand on the other shoulder, just like that, like you're giving yourself a hug and just breathe into that warmth that you're experiencing. Just feel that nourishing, warm sensation of being supported by yourself, respecting yourself and loving yourself to infuse into those sensations. And you might affirm to yourself that I'm okay. I can be with this. And this opens us up into rather than being into a state of reactivity where our mind is dissociating, going wild, it pulls us down just that little bit more. It might not fully like don't don't expect that we're going to like get rid of the sensations or anything, but it's going to give you a little bit more leverage to then maybe feel into the beliefs and the um, resistance patterns that are arising in relation to that experience, which you could either do in that moment or if you just want to resource yourself to help ground you a little bit more or something like say you're in the workplace, that can be a very powerful and effective way to do that. Now, I want to t 
tie in a very important spiritual piece here as well to, to perhaps wrap this up. And there are many different other things we can talk about with this. And there's a lot of subtleties that depend on person to person. So if you are struggling with this sort of stuff, I would highly recommend you could work with me or with someone else. I'm doing a 12 week program for this sort of stuff. But with the spiritual thing as well is there's a very critical piece um, that we can encounter with trauma and it's very understandable. And that is that essentially when we are practicing spiritual practices, for instance, like resting as awareness, uh, we can sort of engage and we can sort of have this embodied recognition, right? We feel it in our bones that we are not our narrative. We are not our story, right? And we don't have to believe that story anymore. Now, this, this gets tricky because there's a middle way with trauma where we can engage with the trauma itself by softly engaging with stories. But the more that we're able to attune to that, we are not our story, we escape out of that victim mindset that we can fall into with social anxiety. Basically, and I've, I've explored this with clients, but what we do is we go into a social setting and we almost have this preemptive idea that, oh God, I'm just going to get reactive and I'm going to lose my shit and I'm going to get really anxious in front of everyone. And um, that sort of becomes the view that we're approaching the social situation through, right? So, it's like we're preemptively um, creating almost like an identity of, okay, I'm the socially anxious one and I'm going to be going into this situation and this is how it's going to go, right? But you can see as you, if that's what your mind is orienting toward, I'll include a quote here, whatever we frequently think about and ponder upon becomes the inclination of the mind, right? So, if we are preempting that we're going to be socially anxious rather than orienting to our true nature through spiritual practices and just into a place of curiosity and openness, our true self, you could say, then we can really box ourselves into this victim identity. I call it a victim identity lightly, right? Because these are very challenging emotional experiences, right? So, it's not like your fault that this is happening or anything like that. But we can sort of buy into that and solidify ourselves in suffering because it's what's familiar. So, if I'm the, if I'm the socially anxious one, it beats the hell out of trying a new or like softening away from that because I can fall into a predictable pattern where I'm not going to lose control of experience, all right? So, I think the more, and I'll finish up this video because it's getting long, but I think the more that we can orient away from that, um, that mindset of, oh God, okay, I've got to go into this social encounter and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get real anxious here. So, how, how can I cope with that? How can I preempt myself and almost armor myself to then feel the sensations, to then inquire into them, to then extract them out? It's more like we're going into it with like, yeah, okay, I might get anxious, but I also might not. And maybe I don't even have social anxiety because I can feel deep down in my bones that that is not my identity anymore. Right? So, we're not in that box of solidified molasses trying to fix ourselves mentality all of the time. But this is not to say that we're going to then spiritually bypass these experiences because we can go too far in the other direction as well where we're just like, okay, I'm, I am awareness, I am infinite awareness. And then we get these trauma responses and flare ups that are very, very real experiences, right? that then basically trap us uh, into, um, uh, we, we then get sort of like vortexed into those sensations. Um, but we can also go too far in the other way of like, okay, I'm going to rest as awareness. Yeah. And then nothing matters. But then meanwhile, we're just not even attuning to our bodily sensations at all. And there's all these like flare ups and trauma flare ups, and we're just sort of numbing out to the experience. I think we have to find that middle way between resting as our true self, but also gently and simultaneously feel into the trauma response as it's happening with a sense of that loving curiosity that I was pointing to previously. But we're also keeping the door open so that this emotion, this somatic contraction, this pain can come and it can go. 
And in that way, we're not spiritually bypassing. We're acknowledging the, the reality that there is significant energetic discomfort in the body. But we're also opening up to the fact that we can let go of these things because the alternative is that we hold on to it forever and we create an identity around the one who's socially anxious and keep ourselves stuck there, healing indefinitely, constantly looking for fires to put out in our experience rather than softening up and relaxing into our true self. So, again, if you hadn't seen the previous video and you want to acknowledge these somatic contractions more directly, these painful traumatic flare-ups that occur through social anxiety, I would encourage you to check that out. Um, there'll be a card at the end of the video. But other than that, I really hope this video helps. There's probably mo much more I could say on it. And again, there's a lot of nuances here that probably differ from person to person. So, it's hard to give general advice. So, if this is something you need help with, I'm doing a 12-week social anxiety integration program for spiritual seekers. I can only take on a few more people because there's um, very limited space with the nature of the one-on-one -on -one, uh, intimate stuff that I want to do with this with people to put it into practice. But hope this helps you. Much love and be well.